Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. I just did a video on installing and using the effects plugin on OpenRGB 0.7 on Windows. And now I want to do the same thing on Linux. If you haven't seen the previous video, I'd recommend giving it a watch because I explain a little bit more about what we're doing here. I'm just going to go through the motions in this video and install it on Linux. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to open up Firefox, and then I'm going to go to openrgb.org, and then we'll scroll to the bottom and look for the Linux download. So again, we're going to look under OpenRGB 0.7 stable. Uh, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of different Linux download options available. And since Linux comes in so many different distributions, we have different ways of packaging for Linux for several different distributions. The first one is the 64 and 32-bit app images. And app image will run on pretty much anything. And the 0 0.3 video I did earlier, um, several a year or two ago, for the older version of OpenRGB, I demonstrated using the app image. But now we have uh, .deb releases for Debian-based distros, and then we have RPM for Fedora-based distros. Um, and we even have a uh, Raspbian Bullseye.deb for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but since this computer is running Debian unstable, we're going to use Bullseye, which is the newer release of Debian. Buster is the older release of Debian. Um, and as for Ubuntu, anything that is Ubuntu 20.04 or earlier, we'll use Buster. Anything newer than 20.04, we'll use Bullseye. So we're, let's go ahead and download the bullseye.deb, the 64-bit. We'll just go ahead and save that. And now that it's downloaded, we can close out of Firefox and open a terminal. And I'm going to just go into Downloads. And we have the .deb here. And this is what we're going to install. So sudo vpkg-i open rgb and then we're going to tab complete and then enter password and then it will install now the thing is if you're doing this for the first time and you haven't installed it before it might fail on some dependencies if that happens do sudo apt install dash f and that will fix your install, which means it will download any dependencies that were needed by this installation. Uh, obviously, I don't have any that I need to install because I already had OpenRGB on here before. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is sudo apt install i2c-tools. And it's already installed, but if you didn't have it already installed, I think you should. It's not expressly needed, but if you want to control RGB RAM or RGB motherboards, at least ones that use SMBus or I2C to access their RGB controllers, you will need certain modules loaded in your kernel. So let's just do lsmod pipe grep i2c. And we can see that we have two different things loaded, and uh, these are i2c dev and i2c dash pii x4 and these are needed to access rgb ram and motherboards uh, pii x4 is for amd systems which is what i'm using and then there's also i2c i801 which is for intel systems um, if they're not loaded for you you can do sudo mod probe i2c dash dev and i2c pix4 uh, or i2c i801 um, that would load the modules manually but then you would have to do that every time before running open rgb so if you install this i2c tools package it will cause these modules to automatically load on system boot so what i'd recommend you do is install i2c tools and then if you haven't had it already installed reboot your computer and then continue on from there after you've rebooted because then these modules will be loaded. So anyways, they're already loaded on my system, we can see here. Um, so we're going to just close this out 
and then open open RGB. So we'll just go ahead and open that. And it's going to detect our devices. And then just like on Windows, uh, if you have an addressable RGB controller, um, it's going to ask for you to resize the zone. So on my uh, Windows computer, I have a Corsair Lighting Node Pro, which I've already demonstrated. On my Linux computer here, I have a ROG Aura terminal from Asus. And that has four ARGB outputs, and then it has an RGB light built into the controller box itself. And the driver is not smart enough yet to recognize that that is a fixed LED. It's basically just a one LED zone. Uh, it just treats it as a fifth addressable channel. So for that one, because it's just the built-in LED, we're just going to put one. And then the other four depend on what you have connected to it. I have a 40 LED strip behind my desk, so we'll put 40. And then I have a 40 LED strip under the desk, so another 40. And then on channels 3 and 4, I don't have anything connected, so I'm just going to leave them a 0. Now the thing is, every time OpenRGB opens up, if there is a zero-sized zone, it will pop up this message. Um, since we have zero-sized zones that we are going to that we're okay with. We, we just want to leave those zero. I'm going to go ahead and check do not show again. And then we'll do save and close. And now if we go to the ROG Aura terminal, we'll see that we have 40 on one, 40 on two, nothing on three and four, and a single LED on five. We've also detected everything else in the computer. We've got the RAM, the graphics card, um, the ROG Aura terminal, which is the desk lighting, a mouse, keyboard, mouse mat, headset, motherboard. Um, note that beginning with uh, OpenRGB 0.6, we were re-enabling some MSI boards. We had issues with those getting bricked earlier with uh, release 0.2. We've reworked the code and now it works, but we've only turned on those that we have personally tested for safety purposes. So this uh, motherboard is tested and working. So yes, my motherboard here, and then the AMD Wraith Prism Cooler, and the Smart Device V2, which is built into my case. And the thing about the NZXT Smart Device V2 is any the Hue 2 devices actually automatically detect their ARGB channels. It's uh, NZXT's proprietary technology. Um, so it's already determined the length of the LEDs connected, so I didn't have to enter that in the um, resize the zones box. So anyways, I'm going to go pull up the uh, camera here. I can see we have everything showing, and this is just the state it was in when I turned on the computer. The uh, Wraith Prism is over there doing its um, just its rainbow loop, the MSI motherboard rainbow loop. The RAM is also doing a rainbow loop. The NZXT stuff came on all white. And I'm going to look at the desk. We have the Corsair K70 came up red. Same with the M65 mouse. And the other LEDs are all off. So let's go ahead and just go back to everything here. Move this over here as we've done before. I'm going to go ahead and hide the LED view. And then we'll just go ahead and try and set everything to green. So let's just go ahead and click set all devices, apply all devices here. And the cameras again are a bit laggy. And so we've seen everything is now green. I'll take my hand off the mouse so you can see that it is green. Yeah. So we can do the same. Let's do blue. And then red. I can do purple, white, so that's all working. So also we can note that this is version 0.7 and that we have a plugins tab and it is empty. So just like in the previous video on Windows, we can install the effects plugin on Linux. So I'm going to open Firefox. Let's go ahead and hide the cameras for now. And we'll go to https gitlab.com slash open RGB developers 
forward slash open RGB effect plugin. And same as before, we'll click on the green check mark, which is the latest commit. And then this time, instead of Windows, we're on Linux, so we're going to download the Linux 64 version and go over to the job artifacts and click download. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll open that with Archive Manager. And it is a .so file, which is like the Linux equivalent of a DLL. So .so.1.0.0. We're going to extract that to downloads and then close that out. So now we can go to install plugin and go to downloads and select lib open RGB effects plugin and hit open. And just as before, we now have the plugin showing up and we have the effects tab. So again, we have all of our devices over here. We have our controls in the middle, and we have the ability to add our effects over here. We're going to go ahead and add a rainbow wave. And notice that on my graphics card here, we have um, a little warning symbol. And I didn't have any of these on my other computer. This is what happens if you have a device that doesn't support direct mode. The idea is... Direct mode is the ability for the software to control the LEDs over to basically purely from software and do software side effects. If you don't have direct mode, that usually means that when you save, when you apply a color to the device, it saves to the internal memory of the device. And when that happens, that internal memory can wear out over time. And so on my graphics card here, my RX 570 Nitro Plus, or I think it's RX 580 Nitro Plus from Sapphire, it saves every change that is written to it. Now on, the, on this particular card, it updates instantly, and it looks good when I use an effect plugin with it, but over time it will wear out the memory in that um, RGB controller, which basically means it may not be able to store a custom color anymore. And... In fact, on my card, I've actually worn it out, and every time I boot it up, it just boots up with the lights all white. And whenever I bought the card, I could it would save the colors across a reboot, a power cycle. It doesn't anymore because I've worn out that flash. And so what happens is you can tell because normally a device will have a mode called direct, um, but this one, it, it only has static. And so... Static does the same thing. You can control the colors, basically just set a color and it will stay that way. But instead, um, it will save that to the device and over time it will wear out as you update it. And the way the FX plugin works is it sends updates over and over again 60 times a second, which causes very highly accelerated wear on that internal memory. Um, Personally, I don't care because I use the effects plugin and I prefer that over being able to save a color. So I was okay that it wore out. And on this particular card, it seems okay. But just be aware if it has this uh, warning symbol, just be careful. Um, note that if you use the effects plugin for a long period of time, it probably will damage your device in some way. Uh, mainly, you won't be able to save colors across reboots anymore. And on on a lot of devices, it will flicker or it'll flash or it'll lock up the device if you go too fast. In this case, though, it doesn't on my graphics card. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it because um, I know the risks involved here. And I've used it plenty of times with this before, and I've already worn out the flash. But just beware. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you understand the side effects. Uh, all the other devices that don't have this symbol mean that they do support direct mode, and they will be just perfectly fine, uh, no harm to them whatsoever. So we're going to just go ahead and... I forgot to turn the camera back on. Let's bring up the camera. And then you can see everything is still white. So we're going to... I'll slow that down a bit. And then we'll click Start. And now everything is doing a rainbow effect. As you can see, both cameras have caught up, and we're now doing the rainbow effect. 
and we're using Linux now, and you can see all the devices are synchronized. Um, note that there is a little bit of a delay between the two cameras because it's streaming from two different phones. So let's go ahead and try another effect. We'll close out the rainbow wave and we'll bring up, let's bring up audio visualizer again, just because this is a port of my keyboard visualizer program uh, that's built into the plugin. Um, I'm going to click select all over here, even though it's hidden behind the camera view. And then we'll go ahead and start. So you can see uh, that's going. Let's pick the, well, actually, this is already the microphone, like Kraken 7.1. So I'll just increase the amplitude. And maybe we have to increase it quite a bit. Let's increase it a lot. OK. So the scaling is very different on Linux for some reason. But now you can see that the uh, visualizer is working. So I don't know why that's kind of laggy on my keyboard here. Let's turn the frame rate down and see if that gets better. Yeah, it gets a lot better if I turn that down. I'm going to put in 25 for background brightness, and then we'll make foreground white. And then we can see, especially on the keyboard, we can see it moving. And then um, let's just go ahead and look at the keyboard. Uh, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. You can see the keyboard is reacting. Uh, it does seem a little bit slower than it usually runs. I'm not quite sure why. The update rate is a little low. Um, maybe let's let's turn that back up to 40 and see if that's any better. Uh, it doesn't really change. Uh, we can go ahead and look at that. Let's. Um, I can't really get that deep bass, even like tapping on the microphone, but you can see that it is responding to the bass effect by pulsing a little bit. So let's go back to the overview here and close out Visualizer. And then we'll go ahead and pick uh, let's go ahead and pick um, oh, let's do Visor again. And we'll just do random and we'll see Yeah, so the you notice it started out very choppy. Uh, the frame rate slider here, the FPS, it's sometimes useful to turn that down because some devices really don't like it being updated too quickly, and they'll, they'll miss updates, and so you'll see a kind of a choppy effect. Uh, but you can fix that by turning that down sometimes, and then it will be a lot smoother. So I turned it down to 30 uh, from 60, and now everything is running a lot smoother. And so, um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind when using the effects plugin is uh, sometimes you want to limit the frame rate. It just helps out. And then let's go and test the shaders effect. Uh, this is the one that does render the effects on the GPU. Uh, we'll do crazy lines again. And you notice it, it works just fine on Linux. Um, this is using an AMD GPU. And it works just fine. We can edit the shader again, just like we could on Windows. And so yeah, that is OpenRGB 0.7 with the effects plugin running on Linux instead of Windows. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy using OpenRGB. And I plan to do one last video showing you how to install this on Mac OS. And then we'll have all three OpenRGB supported operating systems covered. So thanks for watching.